Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming Videos and of course welcome back to more Wild Hearts. With the release underway now, you guys should be making your way through your playthroughs, defeating many kimono, making different weapons, upgrading your gear and so on. And as you've probably experienced, you need a lot of materials. Especially when you reach towards the end game, where you're wanting to actually sort of really build an armor set, get really confident and comfortable in a build. You're gonna need a lot of kimono materials, and getting those easier or faster would be really nice. Fortunately, there are actually a few ways to do exactly that. Understanding this, making use of this, it's gonna make your life so much easier, so I'm putting together a video today on exactly that topic. But before we get into the specific skills that will literally increase your odds of getting rare kimono materials or also get extra materials per kimono hunt, there's something really vital you need to understand about Wild Hearts. You likely know that when you're fighting a kimono, there are parts of that kimono you can break, like the head or a tail cutting that off. And when you do that, it'll drop apart or even give you something to carve like a tail. This means you're going to get extra resources or guarantee that you get specific resources that you probably need for upgrading your equipment. The thing is, there's a bit more to it than that. In specific, take this example of a lava back here. We can see the specific parts we can break here. Number one, two, and three. We can break the fangs, we can break the back for the hide, or we can again break a tail. But it's not until we actually see it in rage that we can break the arms, which now have these sort of appendages glowing and growing out of them. We can break those and get fire rock in that case. That is a way to basically securely guarantee you get fire rock and it's also a resource you need a lot of if you're using say lava back or fire weapons not knowing that you need to wait until it enrages then target the arms to break that part to guarantee you actually get those fire rocks that is a real problem because it means it'll take way longer to just defeat a kimono and hope that you get the resource you need when you can guarantee it. This is also reflected when we look at the unenraged and enraged version of the part softness. You can see how the arms gain a star when it enrages, making it a more vulnerable part to highlight that. This is the case from many kimono in the game and it's well worth checking here under the info screen under giant kimono. After you fight that kimono the first time, you'll have this information. On that note, there is ways to actually make it so you can break parts much easier by actually pretty big percents usually to do with your weapon but there are other ways the skill that you're looking for is destruction art which as you can see i have a 30 percent increase to breaking parts making it much faster that sort of process of targeting a specific part breaking it and then even just carving it and leaving if that's what i need you could argue that's going to be a really efficient way to get a specific part you need if you just need like one or two specific things you can break from looking in that information screen going and doing that using some destruction art and making the most of that destruction art can be found in massive percents on weapons so the yashima claw here comes from the giant rock bear that you fight as part of chapter one then as we work our way down into tier two into the later section of the game you can also make another destruction art weapon out of the same kimono and all i'm doing is i'm bringing the inherited skills from the first one all the way down here so i actually have two different levels of destruction art here in the list and the culmination of the two 15 percents is of course 30 percent but you can also get them on talismans for example this talisman here has a five 5% destruction art on it and you can have up to five talismans so you could have multiple destruction art talismans having them all stacked together to make that even more efficient so for farming materials and breaking parts specifically destruction art is absolutely key but now it's time to talk about skills that will increase the odds of you getting those rarer kimono materials or increasing the amount you get per hunt. Firstly, we have Connoisseur here, which increases the chance of you finding rare materials. Specifically on this armor piece I'm looking at, it would increase that odds by 5%. Meanwhile, Acquisition Art here, that will occasionally boost the amount of materials obtained, so a 5% odds that that occurs. These two skills are vitally important because if you're wearing them, you're gonna get more kimono parts and you're going to get rarer kimono parts, and that's obviously great. And there are various ways to get these types of skills. For example, Connoisseur here. We can get these from the Harvest Canyon Gauntlets and the Harvest Canyon Hakama aka Legs. These require silken thread, lumps of ore, golden hematite, and gold. Whereas the Legs, you'll need pet kimono seeds, silken thread, and more golden hematite. I believe it's around chapter 3 that you're actually going to unlock these options as you go into sort of a higher rank version of the game. You can just pick up these resources like the silken thread and the the golden ore just by going on the maps associated with these and just picking them up it's a bit more complicated with the pet kimono seed which i'll explain in a minute meanwhile for the acquisition art we can get two pieces with that in the gloves and the boots of the frozen fort set the gloves require sharp scale demon rock and more pet kimono seed whereas the legs require some grim strigen bone and peculiar cocoons as well as more demon rock by wearing the gloves and the legs of the frozen fort set we'll have 10 percent increased odds of getting extra rewards per kimono hunt that's massive and i would really 
really recommend specifically this. However, if you're after the rarer materials, Connoisseur is obviously going to help with that. And again, wearing these two pieces, that will give you 10% as well. The problem here is that they're on the same pieces. So an ultimate farming set is awkward because we'd want both of these skills ideally. Unfortunately, in this case, you're going to have to pick and choose between. To get your grim strigen bone, then you're going to need to hunt these death spines, which you'll find in that frosty region, the fourth region you will lock in the game, at Fusagi Fort. The bones come from the higher rank version, so chapter three and above, when you carve them. Whereas sharp scale can be found on the monitor types found in different regions, like the nightshade monitor here in chapter three plus, or the shard shower monitor in chapter three plus as well. Now, compared to that, we are going to have to actually interact with the pet system to get those kimono seeds. As you can see, I can just head up to these two pets that are in cages and collect some pet kimono seeds, the exact resource you're going to need. These guys are inside a wildlife cage, which requires 30 wind to place in a dragon karakuri. This is found in your upgrade tree. It'll be something you'll need to actually purchase with the kimono resources, which is just under the stake uh, on the list. Now, specific pets will give you specific rewards. As you can see, here's a different list of the ones that I have currently. These guys, the berry bright squirrels are the ones that give me the seeds but there's actually a few that will if we go to the creatures tab under the cyclopedia you can actually see which small creatures will give you specific taming rewards such as again the berry bright squirrel here giving me the pet kimono seed but also the cane crown viper will orange tuft constrictors cherry tinged ladybugs frostberry squirrels so yeah basically there's quite a few small creatures out there that will give you these you just need to have first unlock the cage place it down find one of those and then put it in there and then every time you progress time by doing a kimono hunt, they'll have the reward to give you just by interacting them just like they did with me. Finally, for connoisseur and acquisition art, you can also find them on specific weapons, yes. And look, we can get both 10% connoisseur and 10% acquisition art on one single weapon, which you should find at the bottom left of the whole forging weapon upgrade tree. By no means is it going to be an easy thing to get all the way down there and then start using this weapon, but in the late game and as you progress the game long term, having this extra 10% of both not just one, but both. You're not having to pick between them like with the armor. This is a major increase to all of your farming from the moment you use this. And technically what you could do is work your way down to get the destruction art inherent skills, then work your way across the map all the way over to the bottom left, bringing 30% destruction art to the nature splendor weapons, making it like the ultimate part farming material gathering weapon that exists in the game, which could be a very good thing to do in the early days of Wild Hearts before updates come out where you want that benefit. It's time to talk about food because acquisition art, the skill that increases the amount of materials that you obtain per kimono hunt, the really important one in my opinion, this can be got from food as you can see, specifically a vegetable, the spiral fern. 3% when you eat this is a nice increase, but we can actually get more than that. By using drying racks, which is yet another dragon karakuri, a very early game one at that specifically, you can choose to dry these spiral ferns to improve their power. It will take a little bit of time, but it's well worth doing. These ferns that I dried earlier have acquisition art 6%, double the amount of just eating them raw. And you're not dealing with that foil, which increases stamina loss by 5%, so that's nice too. However, the thing is, you can eat both of these. If I eat this dried fern, cool, I've got that 6% increase, and then I just eat the regular undried fern, now I have a 9% increase to the chance of getting extra kimono parts every hunt. So Spiral Fern are pretty important and it will stack with those armors we showed earlier, which would get us up to 19%. This is pretty good. To get Spiral Fern then, you're also going to need to interact with the pet system with a different pet in the specific case. These geckos here are the ones that are giving me it. I can't find this naturally in the world otherwise, so it's very important again to use this pet system. As you can see, Fern Tail Gecko can be found pretty early game in the very first region we play in. I find them very easily here at the tavern ruins. There are two buildings you can enter, this one on the outside of the town and the main one at the back of the town. As we enter the building, you should just see them on the ground running around. There's two already in here, so I'm going to quickly slide over and grab them. I missed that one. Let's grab it. Got it. Okay, so there we go. I've just got two to start with. Then if we come all the way down to the end of the ruined village and go inside the main building at the back, we have another indoor room here, and I can already see one of the geckos moving around at the back of the room. Looks like we only got one this time. We can easily go back to St. Minato and come back here, reload the area, and just farm them. You can get a bunch that way, and you only need a few. Through this system, then, you can very easily, every single kimono hunt, come back to your different camps with your different cages set up, and grab whatever rewards you've got going, like these ferns that I've just got in two different camps. From here, I've got access to loads of ferns and I can be drying many at once to get my 9% increase whenever I want it. 
I also want to highlight two other skills that we can find on armor sets here. Harvester and Animal Whisperer. Harvester will boost the amount of materials that can be harvested by finishing small kimonos, so when you're carving them, you can get a little bit extra. That's really nice. We can find two of that skill here on the Blossom Trail Mengu set, on the head and on the boots. While the Animal Whisperer, this boosts the amount of materials that can be obtained by petting small kimono by 10%, which gives you completely different resources. While they're more like food and ingredients, it's still nice to have, and you can get that on the Spirit aisle set on the head and the boots as well. Why I think it's important for me to bring that up is because we care about those skills that give us extra kimono parts as we hunt the actual big kimono. And that's where Talisman come in, which is sort of an RNG system in this game, I guess a long-term grind aspect. You hunt a kimono, you might get a talisman. You can also find them on the relics around the world in different maps and limit supply. But ultimately, there's a chance that you get a talisman with a different skill on it. And as you can see, I have rolled Animal Whisperer on this talisman. So those armor sets with specific skills that increase the odds of you gathering something or gathering kimono parts, such as connoisseur, that seems possible to be rolled on this RNG system. So you could also get a talisman or multiple talismans that will help boost your odds of getting those rare drops or even more drops. So you might even have one now if you got lucky. But there you have it, that is our overview of our kimono farming tips. Breaking parts, getting specific materials, ways to increase the odds of getting those rare ones, or even doubling up on how much you can get per kimono hunt. Hopefully understanding these things will help you in your own gameplay and get the resources you need. Just working in a bit of acquisition art now in a build, even say during the playthrough, will make a major difference on the amount of kimono parts you have throughout the whole time you're playing. If you guys have any extra tips on this topic, then you can drop it in the comments, maybe you'll help someone. But for now, I hope this is helped you i've been hollow you've been you thanks for watching we'll see you next time josh cotton and hollow with the videos dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment yes i said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye